being the Antony's nature. The love for Cleopatra, which now entered his life, came as the final and crowning mischief which would befall him. It excited to the point of madness many passions which had hitherto lain concealed or at least dormant, and it stifled or corrupted all those redeeming qualities in him which were still capable of resisting temptation. At any rate, Cleopatra succeeded in captivating Antony so completely that he allowed the queen to carry him off to Alexandria. There, this veteran allowed himself to indulge in the pleasures and amusements of a young man with all his life before him and was content to indulge in idle pleasures and waste the most precious of all commodities, that is time. For Anthony and Cleopatra had an association which they called the inimitable good life. And every day they gave banquets for one another of an almost incredible extravagance. <laughs>
He kept in his house an Egyptian soothsayer who was skilled in casting horoscopes. And this man, either to oblige Cleopatra or because he wanted to tell Antony the truth, made no secret of his conviction that Antony's fortune, although great and brilliant by any other standard, was constantly eclipsed by that of Octavius. And so he advised Antony to stay as far from his young colleague as he could. Your guardian spirit, be warned, Anthony, stands in awe of his, and though by itself it is great and proud and full of metal, in the presence of Octavius it becomes cowed and daunted. <laughs>
because of their great weight, were not making the speed which is required to stave in an opponent's timbers. While Octavius, on the other hand, deliberately avoided a head-on collision with their opponent's hulls, which were armored with massive plates and spikes of bronze, nor did they even venture to ram them amid ships, since their beasts would have been easily snapped off against hulls constructed of huge square timbers. So the fighting took on the characteristics of a land battle, or to be more precise, an attack upon a fortified town. Three or four of Octavius' ships gathered round each one of Antony's, and the fighting was carried on with wicker shields, spears, poles, and flaming missiles, while Antony's soldiers also fired from catapults from wooden towers. <laughs>
suddenly, violently descends upon us and finding us unprepared, there is no time now. Sweeps us away.
And he told them to stop wailing for him. That sort of thing was all wrong. They ought to be singing his praises for having been a great ruler, a rich, heroic man. And if he'd fallen now, he hadn't fallen humbly, but as a Roman, vanquished by a Roman.
midnight, when suddenly you hear an invisible procession passing by, the text was in music, voices. Don't mourn your luck that's failing now, work gone wrong, your plans all truly disaster. Don't mourn them uselessly. As one long prepared and full of courage, say goodbye to them, to Alexandria who is leaving. Above all, Say goodbye.